Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making one of my patterns. Let's get started. This is the Jocasta Easy Crochet Plant Hanger. This is a quick and easy project that makes a fantastic gift too. Make it in a variety of colors to bring a fun pop of color to any room. Don't have a green thumb? No problem. Try filling it with artificial plants instead. You will need 100 yards of number five bulky weight yarn and a size M13 or nine millimeter crochet hook. The sample shown was made in one ball of Be So Easy yarn in color cyan. Be So Easy yarn is my brand new number five bulky weight yarn that is 100% milk cotton and comes in 20 gorgeous colors. The pattern includes written instructions as well as a chart. We're going to start with the base and then work our way up to the walls Okay, here's what your work should look like at the end of round eight. If you do not want to hang your plant hanger, if you just wanted it to be like a, a cozy around a plant pot, you could fasten off and be done here. But if you want to make it a hanging plant, um, plant pot, ah, but if you want to make it a plant hanger, meaning a plant pot cover that also hangs, you'll want to attach it to a ring of some kind and if you don't have a ring like this you could definitely do round nine by just slip stitching to itself and I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point um, I don't I don't have an extra one of these rings handy so I'm going to borrow this one to show you how you would slip stitch onto it but then I'm also going to show you how you could slip stitch these chains to each other to join all of these ties together without having to have the ring if you don't have one handy so I think that'll make more sense when we get to round nine. So we're, round nine starts with a chain one, single crochet in the ring, and then chain 36. Got a little loop in my yarn, so I'm just going to pull that out real quick. Where was I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I've got chain 36. Now if I was going to attach it to the ring, I would insert my hook into the ring and work around the ring and slip stitch to join my slip stitch right onto the ring. And then my very next chain, I would pull a little extra tight, that's all. And that would be the first chain of my chain 36. We're gonna do another chain 36. Okay, and then we'll single crochet again into that very same chain three space. So what we're doing here is that chain 36, slip stitch, chain 36, single crochet, well, it's, we start with a single crochet, so it's single crochet, chain 36, slip stitch, chain 36, single crochet is the equivalent of the single crochet, chain three, single crochet bead that we worked for decoration in the middle of our meshes on the previous rounds. And then we're going to do our regular chain three mesh to move ourselves over to the next chain three space. Well, we're gonna skip the chain three in the bead and then single crochet in the next chain three space. And then we'll work chain 36, slip stitch to the ring, chain 36 and single crochet in the same chain three space, then chain three, skip the next chain three bead and work single crochet in the next. And you would repeat this all the way around. Now I'm gonna unravel this and show you how we would do this without the ring as well, just in case. I know there will be people that uh, want to know that. So what we will do in that case is we would work our chain 36. Let me get a stitch marker also so we don't have to count all of this on the next one. So I'm going to grab a stitch marker in a contrast color. So I said we did our chain 36. Then we're going to do one extra chain and that would be the equivalent of that slip stitch to the ring and you'll see why I marked it when we finish this one. And then we'll do our chain 36 again. Okay, then single crochet in our same chain three space. Then chain three, skip the next chain three space and single crochet in the next chain three space. Now on our second repeat, it's gonna be chain 36. Okay, but now instead of joining to the ring, if you wanted to do this without the ring, you could also join to the previous chain just like we do when we do join as you go motifs. So we'll find, if you didn't mark the 
chain, you would have to count up to 37 chains. And since I already marked it, I'm going to slip stitch into that marked chain. And then I would chain 36 and single crochet in my same chain three space again. Okay, and so now as I continue with my repeat, I'll end up joining all of those chain 36 and slip stitch chain 36. I'll join them all into that same chain so that they're all joined together. Keep in mind also, if you would like your plant hanger longer or shorter than mine, the, you, could you could replace the chain 36 with any number. You just want to keep in mind that to keep this even, you would want whatever chain you do before the slip stitch, whether it's a slip stitch to another chain or the slip stitch to the ring, the one right after you want them both to be equal so that this ends up being equal distance from the plant hanger itself. But um, yeah, so make that any length that you need for however tall or short you want your plant hanger to be. Just keep in mind when you adjust the amount of yarn you use, you are adjusting the yardage requirement for the pattern. The one other thing that I wanted to show you was how to weave in your loose ends. So when you're working with a thicker yarn like this, sometimes the yarn can come unraveled a little bit at the end. So I'm going to fake that for you right now because <laughs> this one seems to be pretty intact and sometimes it stays intact and sometimes it doesn't. But let's say it came unraveled a little bit after you'd been working with this for a while. This is actually great if you wanted to do any feathering or fringe. It's really great that you could brush this out and create that look. But look at how much harder it is to insert your yarn needle to weave in your loose end. So what I like to do is come a little further up onto the piece of yarn and bend it in half and then push it through my yarn needle. And look at that. I got all of those strands in together beautifully. And now you want to just weave your ends into your work and I like to go back and forth in at least three directions for a nice secure fit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. Everything we talked about in this video is also linked in the video description. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.